Well, good morning again and welcome to the next in our series of daily devotionals. Today we make our way to the upper room with Jesus and his disciples. We are going to be thinking about events that took place there. As you're aware, over the course of Easter week, we've been just focusing our thoughts on the events of the last seven days of Jesus' life. Today we're going to be reading from Luke chapter 22, verses 1 to 38. Let's hear God's word now together. Now the festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. And Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. As Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus, they were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? This is not the one who is at the table, but I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. There's obviously a lot in this uh, passage in these verses, and not, we're not going to cover everything. We're just going to almost skim a stone down in three points, and we're going to see serpents, service, and Simon. So very quickly, serpents, verse 3, we're told that Satan entered into Judas Iscariot. So Jesus and his disciples have gone to this upper room where they're going to have what we call the Last Supper before Jesus is betrayed and tried and crucified. And so events are really speeding up now. Events are speeding up towards Jesus' death. Uh, events are speeding up towards the cross. And Luke tells us that Jesus is going to be betrayed. Judas Iscariot entered into him and he makes a deal with the religious authorities in order to betray Jesus, to find an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them. The religious authorities were scared to simply to arrest Jesus because he was so popular with people that the crowd that followed him to listen to him, there might be a riot or a big disturbance. So they were trying to be sneaky and find a, a way that they could get him on his own and arrest him. 
Judas, one of the 12, one of Jesus' closest friends, one of Jesus' own disciples, agrees to betray him for a handful of coins. It's a tragic picture that Luke is painting for us here. Judas sold Jesus out for profit. There's two dimensions that Luke's showing us here. He's showing us the spiritual dimension, that Satan is influencing these events, that Satan is hard at work here. Satan entered into Judas. But don't mistake what Luke's saying here. He's not saying that that does not mean Judas is responsible. Judas is not some mere unthinking, unwilling puppet. Judas is entirely responsible for his own actions. He's been influenced, he's been tempted, but he has made these decisions himself. Judas, it would seem, lived for money. Judas, it would seem, lived for profit. And it's a tragic picture that Luke paints for us. He hands Jesus over for some silver coins, but he loses his soul. And that's the big, that's the tragedy. And that's the tragedy that Satan loves to to fool people into, to exchange something that's truly valuable and precious, our never dying immortal souls, for something that is ultimately worthless. Jesus says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? And if Christ wept over Jerusalem, how he must have mourned for Judas too. He knew it was coming. He he points him out at the Last Supper. He says one of his own is going to betray him. It had been prophesied in the Old Testament and Jesus knew it was going to happen and he knew it was going to be Judas, but it must have grieved his heart greatly. That Judas, who had seen so much and heard so much, would exchange his, never, his, his ever-living soul for some silver coins, for some money. You know, your soul and my soul is the most precious thing that we have. And what does it profit us to gain the whole world if we've lost our soul? We're here for a short time and eternity that lies before us is so long. What is truly valuable and truly precious is Christ. And he offers forgiveness and safety, and salvation, and eternal life. Jesus came to save. Let's not make the same mistake of Judas. Let's not think of something, think worthless, something that is truly precious and valuable. Jesus came to save our souls. Serpent. Secondly, service. Jesus has the Last Supper. He institutes the Lord's Supper that we call communion, that we still observe thousands of years later together as a church family. And he says, this is the new covenant in my blood. He's explaining to them his sacrifice. He's explaining to them his impending death, that he is going to give his blood for them. He is going to give his life for them. He is going to serve them in the greatest and most indescribable way by dying upon a cross. And then the disciples in this almost leaves you speechless. They begin arguing who's, who amongst them is going to be the greatest. Can you imagine Jesus has just told them, I'm going to die tomorrow. I'm going to suffer untold agonies and I'm going to do it for you so that your souls might be saved, so that you can have your sins forgiven, so you can be in my kingdom. And then, what are you talking about, guys? Oh, we're just arguing about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Which of us will have most glory and authority and power? There's a simple answer to the question. Which of them is greatest? Jesus is. But it's it's so incongruous that they should be having this argument right in the the context of the Last Supper and Jesus' impending death. And Jesus gives them this amazing teaching about service. He says, he is the greatest among them. He's the king of kings. He is the one who created everything. And yet, he is among them as one who serves. He is among them as one who gives his life. And why does he serve them? You know, he uses this analogy. He says, who's greater, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? And he says, obviously, he's the one who sits at the table. But he says, I'm the one who serves, and I'm serving you in order that you might sit at my table in glory. Jesus is the greatest, and he made himself the lowest in order to lift us up. He made himself nothing, dying even the death on the cross in order that we might be raised. In God's kingdom, the way up is the way down. In God's kingdom, The greatest glory awaits the humblest, the lowest. We humble ourselves and God will exalt us. The verse in the Bible says God opposes the proud. God doesn't like pride. Pride's the worst and the greatest sin and the first sin. 
But as we humble ourselves, in time God will exalt us. So in God's kingdom, the way up is the way down. And thirdly and finally, we see Simon. He turns to Simon Peter and he says, Tonight, Peter, you're going to betray me. You're going to deny me three times. But he says this, But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Two things. Jesus is about to die and endure untold agonies and suffering. And yet, do you see what he's saying? He's praying for Peter. My mind would be all about what I'm about to go through and praying that I would have the strength to go through uh, everything I was about to go through. But Jesus' mind is still on others. Jesus' mind is still on his friends, on Peter. Peter, you're about to fall. You're about to go through a trial. But I have prayed for you, Peter, that your faith will not fail. Jesus carries his people on his heart. And even now, Jesus is in heaven praying for those he loves, praying for his people. Jesus prays for you. Jesus carries you upon his heart if you are one of his people. It's an amazing thing, but I have prayed for you. And the second thing we see from that is this, that Jesus makes sure we're secure. Jesus, uh, Peter, rather, will deny him. He will go through the darkness of the guilt and the conviction and all the emotions that come with that. Peter's going to have a difficult time ahead, but he's going to come through it. And he's going to come through it stronger and he is going to be the one who God uses incredibly and mightily in order to turn the world upside down. He is not done in the service of Jesus. He is not finished. He is not, he is not lost because Jesus has said to him, I have prayed that your faith may not fail. If we are truly in Christ, we are secure, not because of us, but because of Jesus. Not because of our hold of Jesus, but because of Jesus' hold of us. Peter would fall, Peter would mess up, Peter would fail, but Jesus has a hold of him and Jesus will not let him go. His faith will not fail. Jesus holds us secure. So maybe we know what it is to mess up. We know what it is to, to really mess up badly, to hurt ourselves, to hurt others. And we know the guilt and the confusion and the, just everything that comes with that. we are in Christ, he will not let you go. Nothing has taken him by surprise. And in fact, even as we go through the brokenness of these moments, it does not mean we're done with the service. He can use the broken. He can use those who've messed up the greatest. In many ways, he can do the greatest work through them. Jesus saves. Jesus secures. Jesus will continue to use us in his service because we are safe in his arms because he has prayed for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for that wonderful security. Thank you for that wonderful grace. And pray that you would indeed hold us fast now and forever. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So join us again, same time, same place tomorrow. God bless you all.